uh, you know, keep your cameras on if you can. Uh, that actually helps with engagement. So uh, it's 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 motivating for us to to just see each other and just just talk. It's not a one way kind of thing. It's a it's around the table. Uh, want you guys to you know ask as many questions and uh, even help other people as they ask questions. Just answer those. Uh, let's let's see how we can collaborate on that and that and that way we are we are all engaged. Cool. So today the goal is to, uh, or rather, let me let me first uh, talk about what this this forum is for. There's a mixture of. Uh, you know who goes onto these uh, or who comes onto Saturdays with Eddie? It's basically public because it's not geared to one specific advanced group. It's it's more for the beginner uh, trying to get into options. If you're already in options, you know we have a place for you, and that's with you know options. Video. With, uh, <laughs> so again, yeah, yeah. So we have Why? a place where you you're able to to get more in depth in-depth knowledge, uh, in-depth uh, instruction, uh, so to speak. So I encourage you to to join to join that, take a look at that and see how th th that would work. What I was thinking of uh, doing today is, uh, you know, go around the block for folks who, you know, kind of get a feel for where you are in the process of, with options. And then let's see where we can get you to the, how we can get you to the next level. How about that? Does that sound sound good? So maybe we can. Um, I don't know. I'll pick on anyone. How about uh, how about you, uh, Tony? What's what's what what is what is your journey looking like right now? Can you repeat that. Ed? What was that? Yeah. yeah what, how is your trading journey looking at uh, looking like right now? Uh, right now, uh, once before I was with another another group, and now I'm getting back into the options. Starting over again, getting back in the groove of things. I'm pretty familiar with certain things, but need to tighten up on some like the fundamentals and stuff like that. Awesome, I'm awesome. Ready, ready to get back into it. Been watching cool. a lot of your videos. Cool, thank you, thank you so much. And by the way, if you have not subscribed to my uh, YouTube, uh, that's the best way to get informed and stay up to date. Hit uh, smash that uh, subscribe button down there. Am I doing a good job over there, Dora? Down there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere down here, you know. <laughs> I don't know this tickles me, man. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and subscribe and uh, get notified. So that's 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 cool. When we talk about fundamentals, what exactly are we referring to? Are we referring to the semantics of entering a trade? Are we referring to what's a call, what's a put, what's an option? Are those the things we're talking about, or are we talking about, uh, you know, picking direction stuff like that? You know. Uh, what, what exactly comes to mind when you when you th when you think about fundamentals? So anyone anyone can go with that. So. I would say just well, the basics I'll... of understanding. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just the basics of understanding. Um, you know, the chart, understanding what an option is, um, the direction, and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Not necessarily, I guess, um, order entry, but just the basic of, basis of what is going on. Right. Cool. Uh, I think that's uh, that's pretty accurate. Hits the nail right there on the head because we all start with a goal, right? And the goal here is, uh, at least for these particular exercises, to make money. So we have to understand the product that we are selling and buying, buying and selling. Basically, so when you're trying to make money in a business, you're you, you're making something and then selling it for much more than it costs you to make it. Those are the you know, just business one on one, right? You make cookies; they cost you two dollars to make, and you're selling them for ten dollars. Your profit is now eight dollars because you have to subtract, uh, you know, what it costs. So with options, what we're doing is we're selling the contract itself. That is the commodity that we're trading. Or if you're just doing shares of stock, then you're just buying shares of a particular you know, product, XYZ, for example, or Apple or Microsoft or NVIDIA, and you're buying it at a low price and then it raises in price, you sell it. That's the basics. That's the fundamentals. Nothing strange about that, hopefully. But when it comes to options, uh, we are upping up the game. We're, we're upping the game 
by about 100x, right? 100x here means that uh, we're leveraging one contract, which represents 100 shares. That's why we say 100x. And that gives us much more you know, flexibility to make money quicker. But it also gives us a lot more risk because as much as you can make money quickly, you can also lose it just as quick, right? So we understand that. Uh, hopefully, all of you have a platform that you're already uh, comfortable with. Uh, I highly recommend Thinkorswim. That's one of the pl platforms that I use a lot. Another platform that I recommend highly is uh, Tasty Trade. Right, Tasty Trade is uh, is another good. It's a great platform. It's made by the same guys who made Thinkorswim. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job over there. So, you know, I flip back and forth between those two, but primarily, you know, think or swim. As far as the brokerage, and I'm just going around over here with, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this small image that I sent. It's on it's on Facebook. I I haven't downloaded the image just yet, but you you need you need a place to play, right? So hopefully you have a comfortable place to play, and you've already found based on the faces that I see here, I already, I know that you already have a place to play and I'm talking about the brokerage, but if you're watching this for the first time, you need a place to play and that's your brokerage platform, right? You can pick any platform that you want. We just mentioned think or swim or uh, tasty trade, but you also need that account. That account has to be somewhere. Right, so you can go with uh, TD Ameritrade, Schwab, Fidelity, E-Trade, Webull. It doesn't matter where you go. The fundamentals will almost always be, actually not almost, they will always be the same. Right, You're buying low, selling high, or you're selling high, buying low. That's 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 basically it. The, those fundamentals will not change. And uh, in every, every transaction, when it comes to options, there's going to be two things involved is either a call or a put one of those two has to be involved so you have to understand what exactly calls are what exactly puts are and how to use them you have to understand also how to buy or, or when to buy and when to sell so we'll go over some of those things just to um, uh, reiterate a few you know the concept uh what do you know what to what to buy, what to sell. Well, where do you even start? Where do you even start? So um, I would say that the best thing to do is first watch a few things. You know, you can start with the, with the things that you're familiar with, the things that everybody's talking about, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple. Uh, by now, everybody's heard about those, those things, right? Anybody hasn't heard about any of those? If you haven't heard about any of those companies, then um, maybe you need to get out a bit more often, right? <laughs> yeah, you need to get out a bit more often. But pick anything that you use at the grocery store when you're walking around and you see a company that is producing the things that you consume. Procter & Gamble, you know, uh, that's that's another one. PNG is all sorts of things. The shopping mall itself is probably being traded as an option. Uh, so you just pick simple things, you start to understand, and you're not really looking, at, you know, to see uh, how you can make money. You, just, you want to understand first how the stock moves. So the fundamentals of charting, which we're going to see here in a second, let me share my screen real quick so that uh, yeah, I can give some uh, some sort of some sort of reference to what I'm saying. So. Or some sort of substance. And by the way, feel free to stop me at any time, ask questions. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Go ahead and maximize this guy here. So I'm sharing. I'm sharing a screen with. Uh, that is showing a chart of Google at the moment. So Google or Alphabet, uh, trading-wise, it's known as Alphabet. Uh, on the street, it's known as Google, right? And you're looking, you're looking at candlesticks going up and down. This, these are the fundamentals that we are, that we're going to cover, and see how do you make money from 
these candlesticks, right? A lot of wax on the table right here on the screen. But you know, how, how do you how do how do you make head or tail of this? So that's those are the fundamentals that when, when people say the fundamentals, that's what uh, that's what comes to mind. Uh, the other things that uh, and then we talked about a watch list. So a watch list could be as simple as you, you know. Let me show you real quick. So I'm I'm on Think or Swim here, and I'm just going to push the plus button, uh, lower left. Uh, by the way, this is targeted again to a broad audience. So if you've been here before, you're already trading options. This might seem a little mundane. You might want to skip forward uh, in the video, but uh, this is this is essentially where you start. Once you've got this platform, and we've skipped a lot of things in terms of downloading, setting up your account. Uh, we're just going to go right into to a watch list. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new watch list here. So. Clicked on the plus sign. Uh, let's see what, what happened here. Uh, actually, this is uh, what I want to do is create watch list. And I'm just going to give it a, a name. Uh, just going to give it a nice name. Any, anybody got some names uh, they can think of? No. All right. I'm, I'm just going to call it foo. How about that? F O O. And. Uh, we talked about some names like Apple. Well, we talked about some names like uh, uh, P Procter and Gamble. Actually, I meant Procter and Gamble. They are not G. What is G? PG, I think. Yeah, Procter and Gamble. Let's talk about uh, Microsoft. Now let's talk about AMD. Maybe. Is my keyboard a little delayed? I guess I'm typing too fast for my keyboard. Maybe. Uh, what's what's another thing that you guys might normally watch on a regular basis? Just give me give me give me a few names. Palo Alto. Uh, uh, Palo Alto, which is a P. What? P A P A N W. Palo yeah Palo Alto right. And um, give me give me one more one more one or two more. Let's see. Bye. Spy, S P Y, nice. What about right. Nvidia? Let's put Nvidia in there. How about that? Anything else? What Q Q Q? All right, that, that's good enough. So once you set your watch list over here, I'm gonna give it a better name over here. Let's call it uh, Saturday. How about, how about freedom? How about what? I was saying, name it freedom. Freedom, freedom is great. I like freedom. Freedom is a freedom watch list, right? All right. So you can call it anything, right? You just saw how uh, we created a watch list real easy and we give it a name, call it freedom. We put a few symbols in and then we've got a few columns in here. Let me let me expand this uh, just a tad bit just to see what how things are going. I'm going to modify this watch list because it's very basic at the moment. I need it to help me. The columns by default here are not really helping me. It's giving me the symbol. It's giving me the last, which by the way, this is the last traded price of the share of this symbol. And then it's giving me the net change, which is nice. So it's telling me that uh, since it closed or since it opened, it increased by $1.61. That's, that's nice. And it's giving me a bid and an ask do I really care about this? I, I don't care too much about this. It's not really helping me, right? It's not helping me at all. So I'm going to push on this little uh, configuration icon over here. It's really tiny. And then I'm going to push customize. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't need the bid and the ask. I'm going to remove those. Instead, what I need is a, is a study called the ATR. And so on the left side, all I did was just start typing A, T, and R, and notice that it filters things that are that have got those letters in there. ATR actually stands for average true range. Now let's talk about that. The average true range is uh, the range of prices that a particular stock has moved over the last X number of days, right? So X number of days uh, is usually 14. It could be nine. It could be... Uh, it could be fifty. It could be it could be anything. So let's let's see what we can do to configure these. Do you all notice this D over here at the uh, right of right here? There's a small D over here that says D length average. I'm gonna push one time on that, 
And this is where you decide what is your average true range going to be? So most of the time when people are talking about ATR, they're referring to 14 days and an average type of a simple type. So you notice by default, it goes to wilders. That's the reason I'm going into this in detail so that you can change it to simple. Otherwise, you're going to be talking, you're going to be seeing numbers and everybody's going to have a different number. You will have something different and you're no longer in sync. So you almost always want to have the simple and you want this to be 14 and the aggregation is D, which is day. It stands for daily, right? So the average over the last 14 days calculated in a simple fashion, you take out the uh, high extremities and the lower extremities, you're left with the average, uh, average and that gives you a nice... Um, uh, ATR. So once you good, uh, once you get that, then you push OK. Now look at your watch list. It's only got four things. That's all you need. Four things: the symbol, what it's trading at, how much it changed, and the ATR. How simple is that? Yeah, simple as pie. The reason we need the ATR is because it's going to help us identify things that move. So just by looking at the chart, I, I'm not really sure whether it's moving or not. But looking at my chart, say I, I push on Google over here. Uh, what did I just push? Uh, uh, push on QQQ. Uh, I can quickly see that it moves on average over the last 14 days about 6.36 points. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense why I would want to have the ATR. The other place I would have the ATR is probably on my chart somewhere down here along with other things like volume and so on and so forth. And that, that just takes up a lot of space. It's, you know, that, that's prime real estate. So first exercise, if you're looking at this for the very first time, you know, open a brokerage account. You don't have to have any money to get the simulated uh, environment. This is a sim environment or uh, paper trading. So with... Uh, with uh, TD Ameritrade or Schwab, immediately you download or you open an account to them. They give you a, a, a paper trading account as well. And you will not have real-time data immediately. You need at least $500 inside of your real account in order for you to get real-time data. It's free. At least in the U.S., it's free. Outside of the U.S., there's a cost. So uh, real-time data, $500 in your account, you got real-time data. And that's super, super, super important because you never want to be trading with delayed data. How, how delayed is it? Sometimes it could be 15, 20 minutes uh, or thereabouts. I haven't had the time to test it. I, I have no reason to want to use delayed data. Okay. Uh, and then now that you're over here, uh, and again, I apologize for the for the folks who already know how to do this. This is, you know, this is really basic fundamental stuff. Normally, People would, would buy shares of stock. For example, I might buy QQQ, which is an ETF for $439. And let's, um, let's give our account a value. Let's give our account a value. How much, how much do you want us to start with? So, you know, for this exercise, somebody give me a number. Three thousand, five thousand. Three thousand dollars. Three thousand is great. We're gonna go with three thousand dollars. Okay, three thousand dollars. So, do we call that a small account, big account? Who cares? It's three thousand dollars, right? So that's all we have. So, if I had three thousand dollars, would I go in and put all my money on this one stock? Should I do that? No, we you know we've been taught don't put all your eggs in one basket. You need a couple baskets right? Or more. So with $3,000, what I would do, I would divide it into, let me see if I have a spreadsheet over here that I can help calculate for me. Uh, let's see whether I have something real. I, I might have, might have something that can help us. Right.
All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll find it and uh, share it here in a second. So here's here's what we do with a, with a, with a plan of uh, three thousand dollars. Since we don't want to uh, invest all of it, would it be prudent to maybe divide it into maybe three buckets? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe have two positions and one cash position. How how does that sound? So let's let's do a really crude kind of planning scenario here, and it's not too crude anyway because you're actually planning. So that's a plus, right? So you you're actually ahead if you're thinking like that. So if I have 3,000 and I divide it by three, right? Divided by three, it means that I have uh, $1,000 in each bucket. Does that make sense so far? But $1,000 in each bucket. So I have $2,000 that I'm going to allocate to trading and I have $1,000 I'm going to allocate to just cash position. Why do we want a cash position? Sometimes, you know, a deal might come through or one of your positions might need to be bought back or corrected or defended and you need a cash position to be able to do that that's the main reason why you want to do why you want to maintain a cash position so if i had three thousand dollars we've decided that i can have two positions um, and let me also answer the or introduce you know the concept of how many positions should you have now, should you have many positions should you have just one position uh, I would recommend you have no more than two or three positions. When you're starting out, uh, one position is actually good. Yeah, just one position. Even even when you're experienced, sometimes uh, you just want to stay with one position. So I would say one or two is good. So for now, we're going to stick with uh, just one. And we have $1,000 to spend So on, on these fast positions because we have the opportunity to spend on two positions. For two thousand, but we have a thousand for each. So, if we're going to trade QQQ, how many shares can I buy of QQQ? We're starting with the very, very basic fundamentals. First off, how much does QQQ even cost? Do I do I know how much it costs? So, the way to find out uh, about oh, let me link. Uh, I thought I was linked here. I'm gonna link this to blue. Ah, much better. So you can buy two shares. I can buy two shares, and and how did I come up with two shares? I, it's it costs four hundred and thirty nine dollars, right? So if something costs four hundred and thirty nine, and you only have a thousand dollars that you're allowed to spend, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I can only afford two of them, and that would cost me roughly eight hundred and eighty dollars, give or take, right? A few cents here and there. So that's that's pretty basic. How much can I make from investing $800 in QQQ? Uh, not too much. If all I did was just buy shares, uh, in order for me to even make, say, $20, guess what? QQQ would have to move by about 10 points. Right? 10 points. How did I come up with that? Uh, just picked it out of a hat, really. I want to make $20, and the theory here is that if the price of QQQ, which we are going to call the underlying, that is a term that we use for, for the symbol. You, you're going to hear it called many things. It's going to be called the security, or it's going to be called the symbol, or the ticker, or the underlying. Right? All those names uh, point to the same thing. But if you call them the whole, you know, using the whole full names, and that's like your mama calling you by your like four or five names. <laughs> Just choose one, man. Just choose one. So we're going to call it the underlying. So if QQQ increases by $1 and you have two shares, well, you have an unrealized profit of how much? If it increases by $1, right? You have an unrealized uh, profit of, of $2 because you haven't sold yet. You haven't sold yet. Until you sell it, that is when you make the money. But before you sell it, it's still unreal. It's just showing there it's in green. But what if QQQ goes down by $2? Instead of going up by $2, what if it goes down by $2? Then it means that uh, you know, you've lost on paper uh, about, about $4 because you have two shares. That is a very, very inefficient use of capital. So we have $800 and we're talking $2, $3. That's not very efficient. Uh, because to buy those two shares, by the way, what you would have to do is simply click on 
let me slow down that uh, slow that down a little bit i'm just going to click on buy on on the on the uh, on the price over here and it brings up the order ticket and notice that it's asking me to buy stock and i can choose the number that i want to buy it's two of them it's an etf by the way and it's going to cost me that much and then i can push confirm and send it tells me here that i am actually spending uh mm -hmm. You know, it tells me how much I'm spending, which is 874 plus commissions. Uh, I guess zero at this point. And the buying power effect is that it's reducing my buying power by 439. Right, It's a big deal. Uh, it doesn't tell me what my uh, expected profit is because this is not an option. You remember, I can hold this for a very, very long, 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 long time. So this is inefficient. We're not going to do that. Let's look at options the same trade i want to make about a hundred dollars this time i'm targeting a hundred dollars i want to make 100 and uh using that 800 dollars that i or that one thousand dollars that i have allocated for each position right so how do i do that uh i need to go into options trading mode so there's this uh label here that says trade i'm just going to push one time on it and now I have this, uh, all these dates that you're probably wondering. Is anybody wondering what this is? If you're watching this for the first time, let me tell you what this is. This is called the options chain. And we start by looking at the dates. Remember that we're trading a contract and a contract has an expiration date. It has the date that it was purchased, which is when you do it today or whenever. Uh, on your position gets filled and it has an expiration date. It has a it has a lifespan. When you buy a share, you can hold a share for as long as you want. You can hold it for one year, five years, 10 years, it doesn't matter. In fact, a lot of people hold shares inside of their uh, retirement plans for many, many years, 30, 40 years, right? But an options contract has a shelf life. The number that you see here in parentheses is how long it will live in number of days. So for instance, the 11 March expiration is two days away, right? The 19 March is 10 days away and so on and so forth. The weekly just tells you how often it recurs. That's a recurring contact uh, contract. So I'm just going to pick a date here and I'm going to pick about 30 days. I'm going to pick April 12th. Now there's a method where we determine what is the correct number of days to trade because you can trade any one of these contracts. So I'm just going to pick here 34 days. And then once I open that up and you know to avoid going into a lot of technical details, I'm just going to talk about just a couple of Greeks. Uh, Greeks are uh, instruments or formulas that are used to calculate probabilities. They are not finite. They are not exact. They are probabilities. So I'm just going to, for the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to describe a few Greeks. The Greeks that I want to describe, I'm just scrolling up over here so that they can line up with the labels. Uh, first Greek I'm talking, I'm going to talk about is the strike. Okay, the strike. So the, is the strike a Greek? Uh, well, maybe people don't think of it as a Greek, but it in fact is a Greek. And that is just the price at which you're writing this contract. It is not the price of the underlying. This is the price of the underlying. Uh, I should bring up my fancy pen over here so that when I draw on the screen, you all can see what I'm talking about. And let's test it out. Ah, is that working? Yeah, it is working. So what I painted on the screen in that red uh, rectangle is the last price. Sometimes it is called the mark. Okay. So let's talk about this Greek here called the strike. So strike is the Greek that we're talking about. It re simply represents the price at which uh, you're going to write this contract and you can choose any. Now, which one would you choose? Uh, that's where we're going to go next. But before we do that, let us talk about this are the columns here called ask and bid. So ask is when you want to buy something, right? Kind of kind of uh, backwards in my opinion, but uh, ask column is how much 
is, is when you want to buy something, you are going to push on the number on the ask column. Okay. Bid on the other side is another Greek. Everything, by the way, all of these are Greeks. Let's 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 first uh, let's first identify that. All those column headings are Greeks, right? So a bid is when you want to sell. And if you want to think or swim, if you mouse over these numbers, it will actually say sell. And then the uh, other Greek that I want to talk about is the one called uh, the delta. This one is probably where you're going to play the most. So this is the delta, and it represents how much this premium, well, we just talked about an, an, a new word called premium, is going to increase every time the underlying increases or decreases by one dollar right a lot of big words so let's slow down and uh, go back again so we do we're going over the basics the fundamentals we've we know what the strike is and that's we're going to choose a number between 433 and 444 and choose it as the basis for our strike basis for our contract sorry Right. So when we say we bought the 433 strike, this is the one that we bought, that one right there. If we say we bought the 438, that's the one that we did that. And notice that I am I'm I'm kind of leaning more towards the call side. A lot of people learn the call side before they learn the put side, but they are exactly the same. It's only a little, you know, it's just stand on the other side and put put a mirror in front and everything looks backward, but it's the same thing. Yeah. So understand uh, what uh, what you know what these numbers represent. That's the contract, and then the ask price, which is where you was well, a beginner. You're going to be clicking on the ask price all the time. You're never, almost never, going to be picking clicking on the bid bid uh, bid column, and then the delta is going to be guiding you which strike to choose. So let me clear my screen and start over again. Imagine that this is your first day. You're you're just trying to figure out how to trade an options. You're trying to make a uh, hundred bucks, right? That's that's your objective. What do you do? First thing you do is obviously you understand your chart. You've got the symbol QQQ, and then let's go over to the chart and say that this is four thirty nine. At this time, we don't know whether price is going to go up or whether it's going to go down. Does anybody have any any um, opinion about whether it's going to go up or down? All right, just pick any opinion. It doesn't have to be correct. See your thoughts. Somebody, somebody says, somebody participate. Somebody say something. <laughs> go up or go down. Oh. Go oh. up. Oh. All right, go up is good. And how high do we think it's going to go? Uh, we're trying to make we're, we're trying to make a cup of a, a few dollars, right? So I'll go with you and say that let's 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 build a thesis here that it's going to go up. The current price at the moment is uh, four thirty nine oh two. That is where the current price is. So I'm just going to uh, label that and say this is the current price. Okay, and give it a dashed line just, just to differentiate from everything else. We've decided that we're going to build a thesis that the price is going to increase. Okay, by how much, we do not know because this is at an all-time high. That's another new word that you've just learned today, ATH, all-time high. All-time high refers to the progression of prices uh, imagine a gallon of of, uh, of fuel, of uh, gas. And uh, back in the day when price of gas was, uh, what, 25, 30 cents a gallon, and uh, price reached, you know, a dollar, then we would say that it has reached an all-time high. It has never hit a dollar a gallon. Nobody remember those days? Yeah? All right. So... Gas is now at an all-time high of one dollar. Well, the price keeps going up. You know, then comes down, goes up. 
So we've probably seen gas, depending on where you live in the U.S., maybe it's what, $7, $8 a gallon? I don't know. How much is gas in California or the West Coast? I don't know. It's it's pretty expensive. Over here in the, on the East Coast, uh, gas is uh, around $3 and something. So that's the same thing with stocks. The, the price is not constant. Sometimes it reaches a point we have never seen before a high point that is and we call that the all-time high now when we have an all-time high it is difficult to a little bit more difficult to project how high it could go because we don't know whether it could go for for instance this is qqq it's trading at 439 could it possibly go to 500 yeah it's possible have we ever seen it at 500 the answer is no so we don't have good data to project but Sometimes we have a trend that tells us that there's a likelihood that it could go up to that much. But on the downside, below the current price, we have history, plenty of history. In fact, we have tens and if not if not hundreds of years of history, maybe two, a couple hundred years. For as long as the market has been, um, the stock market has been alive, not all symbols have got that huge of a, of, of a history, but each symbol or each underlying has a history from when it was uh, uh from inception date right when it was offered for for sale so here we can if we were to project how far down it would possibly go we have a much better chance of predicting more accurately than up but right now we're going to build a thesis that it's going to go up okay so i'm just going to pick an arbitrary number and say how about five points is it possible for it to go five points? What's five points? Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's about four forty-five, give or take, right? Five dollars. And why do I say five points is probable? Because the ATR or the average true range is telling me that I have that that it moves on average six dollars and thirty-six every day. On average, could be up, could be down, could be a combination of those. So if if I if I'm projecting five dollars, that's that's not out of the question. That's not unreasonable. Okay, so I'm going to say that I'm going to project about five dollars movement. Now, there's more technical detail. I want to make sure that you understand that there's more technical technical detail in planning and projecting what that right amount is. So uh, be sure to join the class to to do that. So. To take advantage of a five-point wow. movement, uh, did I hear a question? So just got the mic on. Okay. So to take advantage of, th of that five-point movement, I'm going to pick a strike. That's the next thing I'm going to do. First thing was understand the direction and, the, and the, uh, identify what where I think price is going to go. This is a thesis, by the way. It's not gospel truth. All right. It could be disputed by the market on Monday morning. So you need at least two theses, one that is going to go up, one that is going to go down. Right now we're working on the thesis that is going to go up. That was step number one. Step number two, we're now going to choose a strike. Okay, I'm going to choose a strike. So we have things called at the money, in the money, and out the money. The easy way to remember is that everything that is shaded in with a purple background in my you know particular case here is in the money it means that everything that is, has a black background is out of the money for this particular uh, symbol the other thing that we want to qualify use to qualify moneyness and yes that's that's a word uh is delta so let me go ahead and draw a few things here i am going to choose the 438 strike, All right? I'm going to choose the 438 strike, the one that I just painted over there. This is the one that I'm using. So remember we said we're going to first uh, understand what the strike is. This is the basis for my contract. And then I am going to look at the delta and I'm trying to qualify whether this is at the money or slightly in the money. Uh, why did I choose those terms? It's because when you want to buy a contract for a call or for a put, you want to choose the strike that is at the money or slightly in the money. So at the money is the one that is 
right, you know, closest in price to the underlying. But the one other thing that is that qualifies it is that the delta is above 50. So I always prefer something that is inside of the, the gray, sorry, the, the purple background. In this case, the delta is 50. And by the way, when I say delta 50, I'm actually referring to 0. 0.5 uh, something, 0. 0.54, 0. 0.55, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So when I say a delta 70, I'm not actually looking for 70. I'm actually looking for 0. 0.7. That makes sense? Yeah. So uh, delta 54 is great. That confirms that, in fact, this is inside the money. It's in the money, well in the money. So we always want something at the money or slightly in the money. The deeper that you go in the money, the better your chances. But we'll talk about that uh, in a, some other time. So how much will this cost me? Remember, one share cost me $439, right? And I could only buy two shares. But now that I'm using options, how much will this actually cost me? So it looks like this is going to cost me about $11.51, $11.51 in premium for my contract. Now, we said we're going to allocate $1,000 for each position. Uh, and since this is my first position, I, I might actually just go ahead and spend that $11.51 it means I'm going to spend less on my second position or not at all. Make sense so far? So I've got $1,151. And why did I come up with $1,151? It's because we said that one options contract represents 100 shares. So the price that you see here in premium actually represents, we need to multiply it by 100 in order for us to get the true price. So 11.51, we multiply that by 100, and that gives us 1151, 1,151, and that number is in, uh, in, in dollars. So let's go ahead and do that. And all we need to do is just push uh, the price, 1151, and notice now that my order is being built, I'm buying a single spread by one of them, QQQ, it expires uh, April 24. That's in uh, 34 days. The strike that I chose is the 438 strike. It's of a type call. And it's going to cost me 1151. Right? Makes sense so far? So this is my low price. We said that when we are trying to make money, we're buying low and we are selling high. So since we know that this is our low, because this is where we're buying, what exactly is our high? How do we figure that out? What do we do or what do we calculate to figure out, well, I bought it at 11.51, so how much should I sell it for? Okay. Let me uh, explain now the, the purpose of Delta. This is the best way to explain it. We understand that every time the underlying which is QQQ, increases by $1. What is increasing by $1? The price of the underlying, not the strike. The strike is constant. We picked the strike of 438. Forget about it now. That's what we picked. So we're now just working with the data on that line. We're now saying that every time that QQQ increases by $1, the contract that we bought for 11.51 will increase by the amount of the delta. So delta here is 0.54. Anybody got their calculator there, Kandi? Right? So when QQQ increases by $1, then my contract is now valued at 11.51 plus 0.54. What do you have? What's, what's the total math there? Yeah, 12.05. Is that what you got? Yes. 12, 12 or 5. Already we can see that this is a much better way of trading, of, of using that capital to make money. We, we can see that we, we just 10x basically our, our, our potential. And we're looking for $100. 
So I need QQQ to move up another $1. Guess what? If it moves up another $1, what will the value of my contract be? Right? We say that when it moved up by $1, the new value was 1205. And every time it moves by $1, we increase that by 0.54. So what's our new value now? 12.59. So, 12.59, okay. So that's our selling price. It means that I bought it at 11.51 and I want to sell it at 12.59. I will have made a total of $108. And how, how did I do that? 0.54, remember that is the premium or that's the delta that is being added to the premium that I bought it at. So we might as well say that every time it moves up, I'm making $54. Are you with me so far? Yeah, this is the simplest way to explain options. So um, a move of $2 of the underlying UQQ in our favor gives us $54 each time unrealized until we sell it. So we want to sell it at 12.59 to make a profit of 108. Real easy. Is that possible? The answer is yes, because QQQ actually does move on average $6.36 every day. If I wanted to capture a little bit more profit, I could do that. But let's say I just, I'm just interested in making about $100. This is how we will do that. So what is the best way to automate this? Because I don't want you sitting in front of the computer all day long just waiting for it to move $2. Right? What's the best way to do it? Right? Best way is to use a bracket order or to automate this whole thing so that once it reaches that value, then the system automatically does its thing. It sells uh, based on your instructions. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete this. I am going to clear my screen over here a little bit and show you a better way. The better way is to right click on the ask column on the price here of 1151. I'm going to right click on this, I just did. I'm going to push buy custom, okay, buy custom. I'm going to choose with OCO bracket. OCO stands for order cancels order or one cancels the other. I've not really found the true meaning, but I don't know. Or whoever came up with these names, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it probably at a happy hour. That's that's my take on it. How about that? In fact, we should have a small competition to, to name or to define OCO. How about that? <laughs> You guys come up with something funny and then we'll, we'll start calling it that. So that's the bracket order that we want to use with OCO. And I'm going. that's what I'm going to choose. When I click on that, I am now presented with an order ticket that has got three orders. And I need to modify all of these uh, somehow in order to get the objective that I want. But let's first understand what, what's happening. I'm buying, this is my order entry, it's green. I'm the quantity, I'm buying one contract. That's a symbol, again, the date uh, of expiration, April 12th, and the strike, it's of a type call, and that's a price, and it's LMT. What the heck is LMT now? So let's describe what LMT is. Limit, or uh, LMT is actually limit limit means that i'm telling the system this is how much i want to pay for it but if you have a better price go ahead and give that to me what are the chances they're going to give me a better price that's possible happens all the time every day millions of times so you always want to use a limit order to get in because you're telling the system this is how much i want to get in and no more than that what is the alternative? The alternative would be to tell the system, you know what, just give me whatever price that you can get, in which case I would not be choosing limit, I'd be choosing market, right? So market, you see there's no price. That's dangerous because this price could spike up to $17 and all of a sudden I bought too high. So you don't want to do market. Instead, you just want to do limit. And then if you want to lock if you want to log that price, you're now telling the system, I want this price and only that price, no other price. But if you want a better price with a limit, then leave this padlock unlocked. That's the difference. That's what, you know, that's how you get a better price. Okay. 
So the next line is a cell. Notice the first one was a cell, and the next two lines are uh, uh, sort of first line was a byte, the next two lines are cell. So why would would this be a cell? What's what's going on over here? Well, we bought something, and the only way to make money is to sell it for a higher price. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So how much do we sell it for? We calculated and saw that we want to make $100. So guess what? Uh, since our delta was 54, we calculated and we saw that potentially if QQQ increased by $2, then our new premium, uh, somebody remind me, what was it? 12 point something? 12.59. Uh, 12.59. So that becomes our selling price. Yeah. We bought it at 11.51. On all these numbers, by the way, they are expressed in premium, not in the real money. So I wouldn't put 1259. That that it, it's possible, I guess, you know, that's called going to the moon. But no, no, you always want to express it in premium. And then you can do the math in your head times 100, knowing that you're going to receive $1,259. You take out your cost of eleven fifty one, and you'll be left with a profit of a hundred and eight dollars, give or take. Right? What is this third line all about? Uh, this is where we talk about risk management. Right? Everything has a risk. There's no such thing as a risk-free trade. No such thing. Absolutely zero. Anybody ever tell you that? Uh, you know, just walk away. Everything has risk. What you have to do is understand that there's different levels of risk. So you always want to be risk of us. You don't want to lose everything on principle. When we started this, we said that uh, with leverage, you can make a lot of money or you can lose a lot of money. The better thing to do is instead of losing a lot of money, have controls in place that will help you not lose a lot of money. And the way to do that is by having this kind of a bracket order with a take profit and a stop loss. So this is your stop loss line. And now the question is, we are expecting to have a reward of $108. How much can we risk? What is a good risk? I'll give you some guidelines. So the guideline here is that you don't risk more than you can possibly make. So if you can make 200 bucks, don't go risking $250. If you can make $300, you shouldn't risk more than $300. You shouldn't risk more than $300. So in this particular case, our risk, our potential reward is $100. Let's call it $100. Should we risk more than $100? No, we should not. So I'm going to leave the default here. And notice this number here it says is 10.51, which is exactly one less than how much we're buying it for. It means that potentially, if this works well, we're going to make $100. If it doesn't work, we're going to lose $100. So that's kind of a one-to-one. -one. Most people will go with at least a two-to-one. For this example, I'm just, just going with a one-to-one. -one. A two-to-one would mean that if I am potentially going to get $100, then I will risk no more than $50. If I were to do that, then this number would be about eleven dollars. I'm rounding down here. Does that make sense? In fact, let's go with that example and say we're just going to risk fifty dollars. Make it a two to one. Okay. One more thing I need to do. Is it possible that this trade could take a few days to work? Yeah, it's possible. So I'm going to move over to this column and notice that they all say day. And for the purpose of describing to people who are seeing for the first time, this simply means the time in force. So if I put this order in, will it be available on Monday? The answer is no, it will not. Right? So why go to all this trouble if I have to put it in on Monday again? Well, I can prevent that by simply clicking on this and choosing GTC. GTC stands for good till cancelled. It doesn't mean anything more than that. It's This order is good until I... Cancel it, right? Until I cancel it, right? Now, can I confirm and send? Well, the confirm and send just got grayed out. Why is that? It's because all orders must have the same time in force. 
must have the same time in four. So that's an easy fix. All I have to do is just make all of them GTC. GTC. Voila. Look at that. Now my confirm and send is available. All right. Let's go ahead and confirm and send and see what this looks like. Uh, I am buying. This is order number one. Buying one QQQ. Expiring on April 12th at 11.51. Order number two. I am sending an order to sell it as soon as the price of that uh, or the value of that contract reaches 12.59 and order number three if things don't go my way guess what this is my stop loss i'm going to lose of roughly 50 bucks okay roughly 50 bucks if i push send on this where does that go well that goes to the monitors tab and notice now that I've got a working order. That's exactly what it means. It's working. Imagine yourself standing in line at Starbucks or drive through. You've placed your order. You haven't reached the window once, you know, your, your coffee is being made. Once you get to the window and they give you your coffee, then it gets filled. Guess where this order is going to go? It's going to go into the field orders. Field. If it gets canceled, this is where it's going to be. So these are the fundamentals uh, that, that we, that we, that we all need to know. There's basically four things that you can possibly do with options. You can buy a call, sell a call. You can buy a put or sell a put. Four things. Those are the only things that you can do with options, whether they are simple or whether they are advanced. The next thing that you can do to make it more advanced is to combine selling and buying. So I can buy and sell a call at the same time, and I can buy and sell a put at the same time. So now we're talking about advanced strategies to take advantage of different strategies. For instance, if I wasn't so sure that about price uh, direction, could I could I also start building a thesis like I don't think price is going to go to four sixty right in the next uh, in the next uh, you know five days. So what could I do? I could I could sell a call at four sixty. Is that right? I could sell a call at 460, but can I sell naked? So now we're getting to the advanced uh, uh, you know, semantics of, of trading. And since I cannot sell naked, by the way, selling naked doesn't mean I don't have any clothes. It just means that I don't have that position covered. So once again, the audience here is you know, hopefully an audience that is looking at this for the first time or you know, trying to understand how options work. So... Because I cannot sell naked or I cannot sell an uncovered options contract, then I have to buy and sell or sell and buy at the same time. So I'd probably be selling the 460 and buying the 465. Right? That's called a credit spread. So my thesis there would be that price is going to remain below 460. And again, the price, the, the strike that you sell. Let me demonstrate how you would do that. How would you sell, right? So how, the way that I would sell is I'd go to the 460 strike. Now I'm seeing only 14 over here. So this is actually a good example here. I'm seeing the four 14 strikes. I, I can I can look at all of them. But do I really need to look at all of them? No, maybe I need to look at maybe 30 of them. How about that? That is good. Uh, actually, no, it's not. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 60. How about, how about that? All right, let's go to 60. And now I can see that. By the way, when you are buying or you're going long on calls or puts, you want to pick a nice number like 45 to 90 days. In this particular example, we chose 34 days, for example. But if you're going to sell, then you want to choose as short an expiration as possible. So April 12th would not be optimal for us. Instead, the day that would be best for us would be maybe uh, 11 March. Okay, 11 March would be the next closest expiration. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to push on the sell column for 460 and there's actually no premium. So that tells me that I, I can't even sell at that level. There's zero premium. Yeah, I'd have to go a little closer to the money, basically to this line over here in order to get any premium. I think that might be too much for 
uh, for today. Let's uh, let's let's stop right there. We're going to talk about credit spreads in more detail uh, on another day. How about that? Yeah, that way this concept is not muddled. It's not. Uh, let me pause there for questions. Anybody got questions on, on what we just talked about? So Shakila, you said fundamentals. That covers pretty much most fundamentals. The other thing that, that I would cover in fundamentals would be how to plot your chart correctly. So essentially what you're doing is to understand how prices move. Uh, this one is not moving a whole lot, uh, but but what you want to do? Let me let me pick P A N W. I haven't looked at that for a while. This is uh, Palo Alto. Let me clear my screen. Uh, somebody likes Palo Alto. I don't know who that is. Somebody suggested it. But you always start with uh, identifying your 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 current price at this particular moment. We are at two eighty point two. I'm not too particular about the decimals, right? Because this is all estimations. I don't care about the, uh, you know, what comes after the decimal. Well, let's go over this example here real quick. We want to identify things called targets. Targets are what you're aiming for, essentially. You know, nothing fancier than that. And targets, when it comes to trading, and looking at the chart, you're looking to see how high can it go, or how low can it go in the short run, okay? So we're looking for our support. That's how low it can go. We're looking for our resistance. How high can it possibly go? We are almost always looking for where, not almost always, we are always looking for Actually, yeah, that's almost all this. We're almost always looking for where price changed direction or where there is a gap. A gap is where it looks as though there was no activity. For, for instance, this is a gap right here. From, from this point, 327, all the way to 359, that's a gap. Um, the question is, is that the next level of resistance? And I would say no, because... I can see that price change direction at this point. So this, this, this actually might be my resistance, 300. The, I'm going to label this one as a resistance level one. And you can continue to draw resistance level two and three and so on and so forth. Do we care about resistance level two, three and so forth? The answer is no, you should not. Do not. So when you're plotting your chart, you only need one resistance level, one support level. Because when you're trading options, your target is always the first resistance level. Make sense? Right? You don't care about what, what potentially it could be. I mean, who cares whether it could go to 327? For now, all I see is 300. Right? It could go to 380. Yeah. For now, what's realistic, it will more than likely be challenged at 300. On the support side, we are always looking to see below where price change direction, and it looks like this is it, right? How did I come up with 234? Well, let's let's qualify that. I am looking at today's candle, which is this one, and then I'm looking to see how price, and, and everything below today's candle. So assume that you cannot see everything above 280.2. In fact, I'm, I'm going to draw, I'm just going to hide that. How about that? Let's let's hide everything uh, above uh, two. Let's just, just hide that. See how that worked over there? What do you guys think? Uh, some nice paint, huh? Just came out. Home Depot, aisle nine. You can get it. <laughs> oh, man. Paint is on sale. That actually helps me see something I had not even seen before. Because guess what? If we're looking at everything below 280.2, it means that I can jump from candle to candle to candle. I, I have to consider everything I see, whether it's a wick or whether it's a body. Because at, at one point, that candle was completely solid all the way to the very, very bottom. Yes? 
So from, from here, it's going lower, lower, lower. What's the next one that I see? This is a trick question. What's the next candle that I see? Pretty sure you guys can see my screen well. Isn't it all the way over to the left? To the to, to to my left or to my you, you just tell me when to stop. I'm I'm moving left. Left. Just tell me when to stop. Stop. Stop, stop. Okay, stop that. Because you're looking at this small candle over here, right? Yes. Exactly. Right? So if I zoom in, I notice that uh actually let me auto zoom. Yeah, this this little can over here actually occurs before this 234. So this is not my sub next support. My next support was my first support was was a was a two two hundred and sixty. Okay. So I don't really care about the 234 just yet. I do acknowledge it, but uh, for the moment, it is uh, you know not significant. So that would be my next support level, 260, uh, where I would more than likely be challenged. This is a target, and that's a target. And let's talk about that. The expected movement is the difference between the current price and where your target is. So right quick, without considering the decimals, what's my target if price were to go upwards? The difference between 300 and 280, about 20 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, zero brain power required for this. So in the same breath, I can also see that if price were to continue going downwards and my target was 260, my expected movement was is $20, simply the difference between 280 and 260. The higher the expected movement, the better the trade is. So this is a good example. I love this, the, this, this example right here. And this is how you decide how much of a potential that you could make. So if I want to go 100% uh, on, on that, then, then it simply means that I have a better chance of making more money either on the way up or on the way down. But it's it's still not an A-plus trade. An A-plus trade is what I call, it's, it's, it's got to meet several you know, additional criteria. And right now we're kind of in the middle of a zone. Uh, this is our sell zone. This is our buy zone. So we are right in the middle. We're in the middle of support and resistance. In order to have a better chance of getting an A plus trade, you want to be as close as possible to either the support or as close as possible to the resistance where price is just about to change. Right, so you want those to be, you know, uh, to your advantage. Uh, so once you land that price action, Shakila, this one is for you for you know to, to kind of identify that. And the better you, the, the more you do this, the the better you become. And you want to pick those uh, stocks that have a higher ATR. So notice that this one has an ATR of twenty one point eight nine. See that? Right. So if I look at my watch list. And the column that we added at the beginning of the call, we see that this one has an ATR of point of 21.89. Don't let the net change distract you. Right? It, the net change just means that after it was done moving up and down, up and down, up and down, at the end of the day, when we calculate everything, when the accountant you know, goes and counts the beans, we only moved $1.34. Right? Does that make it a bad stock? No, no, no. In fact, we can see that the range here from 280, it went all the way to 285, uh, actually to, uh, let's call that 288, that's eight points. But we are only reflecting a net change of positive 130. It means that we started the day uh, you know, down and then went up. Even though we came back down, uh, it was still a net positive. So the number that you want to pay attention to mostly is the ATR and the size of those candles. If you've got some really nice size candles, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. You want things that move. So, 
questions there. Questions there. Let me pause there for questions. I did say we're not going to spend a whole lot of time today. This is mostly at beginner level. Uh, maybe next session we can talk about a few more advanced strategies. But but for now, I want to keep it real simple and uh, give you guys the opportunity to ask questions and how you can learn more, how you can master this. Because this is just fundamentals, right? You need you need a bit more information or a lot more information in order to build some solid strategies where you're making at least X number of dollars per week. I usually talk in terms of per week, not per day. So we're talking about you know five hundred thousand dollars a week. If that's you, then you definitely want to be in uh, in my class. Okay. All right. Let's see. I'm just gonna pick on. Um, Let's pick on you. How about Maya? Maya, what's what's up, Maya? Oh, she dropped off. No, she did not. <laughs> okay. Cool. All questions. Or anyone who has questions. Uh, hey, 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 I do have. Hey, I do have a question. <clears throat> yep. Yep. What's up, Tony? Okay. Before you even get to chart to your charts, and you have to look up. You want to look up a company before mm -hmm. you even get to looking up the chart on that company. Yeah. I know one of your videos I saw that you were, uh, I think it was on FinBiz. Mm -hmm. What exactly are you going to, to to study? Okay, this is what I want to look at to determine if that company is something I even want to chart. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great question. So what you want to do to, I, let me rephrase your question. Yeah. And uh, you stop me if, I, if, if I'm going the wrong direction here. The way I understand your question is you're trying to figure out what do you put on your watch list? How do you qualify that company to be worthy of being on your watch list? Is, is that about right? Exactly. Correct. Okay. That's 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 a beautiful question. That's one of the things we, we actually want to... Uh, you're, you're asking this particular question here that I said, review high-performance stocks. Uh, what is actually worth watching? That's... Because you don't want to just put anything in there. We just saw with this last example that we had two particular stocks. We had QQQ that, that moves an average of six points, and that's great. And we also saw another one, Palo Alto, which moves 21 points. And we saw that there's greater potential in the one that moves higher. So let's start building a criteria for what needs to be on your watch list. Number one is you want to trade in something that is highly liquid, very, very liquid. Uh, liquid here means in terms of uh, trading, it means that it trades in the millions of shares every day, right? In the millions. So what's the minimum? Can we just start off with a million? How about that? Right? Real easy because we have stocks trading in the billions. That's with a B. So a million is not uh, is not a bad number. It's not it's not unreasonable. So that's the first thing that I would start uh, start with. I would I would use a tool, and we'll we'll go over a few tools that we can use to see uh, that we can that we can use to to help us understand how to get um, uh, how to, how to look for those kind of stocks, right? So I am going to. Bring up a tool. The second thing is we want something with a high ATR, right? A high ATR. So what, what's the minimum? Uh, I'm going to go with five. You can still see my screen over here, right? Right? Let me bring... That was, that was Tony, right? Yeah, Tony. Okay, so I brought up a website here called Finviz, and there's tons of places that you could do this. In fact, you can do this inside of Think or Swim, but let's look at Finviz. I think it's uh, available worldwide. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. If you cannot see this from Europe, Africa, Asia, you should be able to access this website. Uh, some websites I know that you might not be able to. So I'm on finviz.com, F-I-N-V-I-Z.com. It's free for now. And I want to build a watch list that will be worthy of watching. How about that? For lack of better 
things. So you can read these. These are the high movers, blah, 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 all of that. Uh, but this, they've got this uh, one link over here called a screener. And I just clicked on screener. Uh, this is kind of dark for me. I'm going to switch here to the light theme. How about that? Much easier on the eyes. Yeah. Ellie, would that be the, the basic version? Is this considered the basic version? Uh yeah, this is the this is the basic version. I'm I'm not even signed in. I'm not even signed okay. in and, and all that. This is just, you know, I haven't done anything yet. I can I can uh uh I can subscribe if I wanted to, but there's absolutely no reason to to subscribe. So all I did was uh, click on screener. I haven't signed in and I've got all these criteria that I can choose. So the first one that I'm going to click on maybe is uh, uh, just reading this. How about, how about I start with, uh, I'm on the descriptive. How about if I go to the fundamental and see whether there's anything that is interesting there for me. And uh, I'm going to choose, tell you what, the price. I'm going to say price will be the first thing. Because I don't want penny stocks, can I go with something that is worth more than $20? Yeah. I'm going to go with something over 20. And notice that it's now starting to filter. I had closer to 10,000. I have about 1,600 stocks. Okay. And then I am going to choose, uh, I'm looking for average true range. That might be under technical. So let's go over to technical and see whether that is where it is. Yes, in fact, it is under technical. So now under technical, I am going to choose average true range. And it says any at the moment, what if I chose over five? Right? Now I've got 136 tickets that I can that I can choose from. Okay, that's not it. We say that we need we need for it to move a lot. Right? We need we need an average volume of uh, at least one million. So where would that be? Maybe that's under. Would that under be be under descriptive? Maybe. Uh, maybe relative volume. I think relative volume or average volume. Yeah, let's go with average volume, and I want to go over one million. So this is average volume. You've got different kinds of volume. You've got average volume, relative, and you've got current volume. And this may or may not be close to each other. So I am going to say, uh, I'm going to say over 1 million. Where is over 1 million? Here we go. Over 1 million. And now I have 47 to pick from. Yeah. Tony, are you seeing how I'm doing this? You can see that I've got 47. Yes. And, and, yes. Now, the, and now the next thing is, because these are all over the place, do I just want to pick any? I want... What I want to do is I want to diversify. I want to diversify my watch list because they don't all move the same. And it's a good thing that this tool is actually giving me the sector and the industry and the company and the country. So that's another thing. Do I want anything that is uh, outside of the US? Generally, I like to trade things that are in the US. So I might go with country and say USA only. And now I have 41. So I've, I've pretty much... Uh, segregated to just US based companies and they all trade on average because I pick the average over 1 million transactions every day this is a daily number they have an ATR of at least of at least 5 right so over 5 and what else did we did we pick? Uh, we picked uh, the price, and we say the price is, uh, I believe we said over twenty. That was under uh, the descriptive, one million fundamental. Nope, that was under the the, the yeah, descriptive, the fundamental. Sorry, uh, and that's over twenty dollars. So these are stocks that cost over twenty dollars per share. They trade over one million they move on average at least $5 and greater, and they're all based in the US. So now I've got 41 to choose from and I can diversify. Well, how many do I want? How many do I need? 
I would say that uh, maybe 10 to 15 stocks is, is, is good. I'd start with the ones that I know or the ones that move even higher and keep those, watch those for, you know, some time and see how they behave. Then I'd, uh, you know, I'd come back here if I needed to, to make any changes. So I can already see some good companies here. I can see Adobe. Everybody knows Adobe. Hopefully you've, you've all uh, used the PDF somewhere in your life, right? Uh, Autodesk, that's technology. And you know, you're going to notice that a lot of these high movers are in the technology space. So these are stocks, by the way, these are stocks. Uh, if you wanted to do ETFs, you can also filter by ETFs, right? I could go over here and, and say that I only want uh, ETFs of a particular category. So that's, that's another discussion right there. But I would pick from these. I've got about uh, three pages. Uh, no need to page through them uh, for now, but you know, go ahead and pick about 10 to 15 of them and add them to your list. That's how you get uh, a good list worthy of watching. In fact, you will notice that uh, I have very, very few symbols on my on my regular watch list. I'm, I'm not showing here right now, but I've got very few things. And then I've got others that I don't even trade, but I want to also watch them because they influence the market. For instance, uh, let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, for instance, the, the indices. Notice that I am following things like uh, the Dow Jones, because I'm interested to see what the Dow is doing. I'm interested in things like the NASDAQ composite. I'm interested in the, the futures. So all those are symbols that we can discuss even deeper to see their relevance and how they guide you in determining what direction the market is moving from day to day. So what's the point of watching this if it doesn't help you make a decision? I can teach you how to do that. That's 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 what that uh, that is for. So you also need, in addition to the ones that you pick from your list on Finviz uh, or whatever other tool that you use to create your watch list, you also need a few others uh, like the indices to help you uh, with with direction. Make sense, Tony? Yes, cool. it does. Thanks. Cool. Cool. And there's another Anthony there. So, how's it going, Anthony? Everything is going well. Everything, all right. It is what it is, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and I are. made it. Awesome. Welcome. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Uh, so that's uh, in, in brief. Uh, that's a quick introduction for uh, you know folks who are you know getting getting into these for the for the very very first time, uh, or you know they've been around but the, you you're not really sure where you know how to do this. The main objective is to is to end up in this space over here. We're trying to all end up in this space for making uh, weekly income using stock options. Right, not shares, right? We we I think we pretty much know how to do shares. We you know, but we want to move past that. We want to get to this place where we're learning how to build an A plus trade. We're going to master three to four st uh, strategies, uh, and that's important. There are thousands or hundreds, if not thousands, of strategies that you can possibly make, and I'll just demonstrate that. For instance, if I simply go over here to uh, the options chain, and I'm just going to pick any one of those. All right. Let me reduce the number that I see here. And if I click on spread, right, I just clicked on spread, and I want to change it from spread single to spread something else, I can choose vertical, a back ratio, calendar, diagonal, strato, a strangle, covered stocks, all of that. I can go into double diagonals, unbalanced. I can go deep and wide. And just keep going uh, in terms of which uh, which strategies that I want. Do I need to learn all of these things? Not really. That's a lot of that. that that's too much. Uh, it's too dense. There's too much information that you may or may not need. And I would not even try to get there in the first couple of years. You're more than likely going to stick to the very very first two. Singles and verticals, 
for the first couple of years. And for a lot of people, this is all you need to give you that three, four thousand dollars every month. Right? That's that's all you need. That's all you need. Before you start making that, you know, X, you know, five figures every week or or, or, or you know, so on and so forth, you're gonna spend a lot of time with singles and verticals. And you're going to discover that if you're making your five, six grand every week, you know, do I really need to go into complicated things? You want, here's what you need. A strategy that makes you money consistently. A strategy that is repeatable. A strategy that doesn't take up a lot of time. Because right now you probably have a job or a business that takes up a lot of your time. So you need something that is taking maybe a couple hours of your day. That's it. Set, forget, can, you know, manage because you've got, I will teach you the tools to manage it so that you're not in front of your computer all day long. All you're looking for is that notification on your phone that, yep, strategy worked or risk managed, right? That's what you want. You want risk free. You you, you want uh, stress free, not risk free. You want you want stress free trading, and you're going to discover that you just need a few dollars every 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 day, every other day. That's how you get to your hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, so yeah, I was bringing that screen up so that you can see that there's you know so many strategies that you can take advantage of, but. You, don't, you only need about three to four. That's all you need. Three to four strategies for consistency. And uh, I don't guarantee, but I can say with great confidence that a lot of people who've figured these out are actually making a lot more than they make at their regular job. Right? So even if you're making two, 300 bucks every day, you're probably making that two, three hundred dollars based on one hour worth of trading. Is your job paying you two hundred dollars an hour? Oh, maybe Shaquilla. Yeah, Shaquilla. Yeah, you know, don't answer the question, Shaquilla. <laughs> you know, two hundred bucks an hour, right? <laughs> so if you if you're making that, then yes, you know, don't don't get into trading. You 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 you're really good where you are. Uh, but for most people, you know, two, five hundred, two dollars, two hundred, five hundred bucks for a couple hours worth of work, I think is much, much worth it. So that is the scoop. Any other questions? And I hope I pushed record. Did I record this? Oh my goodness, I did not. Yes. I did. Is it recording? Okay. All right. Great. Awesome. 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 Let me stop sharing. Let me see your faces. There we go. Will you be making this available on YouTube? I have been making less and less available. I have this uh, new thing that is uh, by subscription where if you watch live, then you're good, right? You get, you get to participate live, right? you may or may not need the recording. If you don't uh, participate live, then the incentive to watch this means that you might have to pay for it. Does that make sense? So it's a business decision there uh, based on my marketing people. Where's the information for the paid? Um, I can I, if you're if you're in my class, you don't have to pay anything extra. If you've taken my class, you don't you don't pay anything extra. It's it's in your course curriculum. So, yeah. I but, have uh, a couple of questions after we're done about that. Sure. Excellent. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Well, it is now uh, 12.30 p.m. Uh, let me bring it up. Uh, if you want to participate in these uh, great things that I'm talking about, all you need to do is uh, go to Options with Eddie. Let me bring up the website here. Uh, let's see, desktop number three. Hopefully, you all can see this. Uh, I, I'm sharing again, right? So yeah, just go to optionswitheddy.com and you can push sign up. If you need more information, go ahead and just read that. This is the format. I haven't updated these, but uh, on the website that is. But in in real life, I've actually updated a f uh, quite a few things. 
in terms of the content, I am going deeper and deeper into strategies that are repeatable and they have a higher probability of success. That is what I am focusing on because I'm realizing or I, you know, I, there's a need, there's a great need for people to see results and I'm very, very results oriented. So I want to make sure that uh, when, when you get into it, at least you're getting your money back and more. You're not just doing these for exercise. You're actually making money. So the course has changed. Uh, there's plenty. There's, uh, you know, huge, huge differences. It's very, very intuitive. And, uh, you know, we take a deep dive into options. So learn more about this. Uh, this is the program summary. And if you need to sign up, you just push pricing and sign up. It's as simple as that. I don't collect a whole lot of information. Simply your name. You tell me who you are, your email. You want to choose, uh, it's called a boot camp. It says for four weeks. Uh, if somebody referred you, then you just write their name. That's as simple as that. Just write their name and they get uh, 5%. You know, just just for referring you for this, okay? And then once you push continue, you get this agreement in PDF format. You sign it, you send it to me. It's got instructions of how to pay. Bada beam, bada boom, you get, we schedule you for the next class, okay? If you're confused or you will need more information other than what we've talked about or you just simply don't understand all of these, you, you just need a little bit more push in the in the you know, to make a decision, then you can always sign up for a quick meeting for 20 minutes, right? So you just pick a time with me, uh, you know, let's try and figure out if we're a good fit, whatever works for you. These are my available times and it's going to send you a Zoom link. We'll get together, we'll talk about it for, you know, 20 minutes, give or take. And, uh, and then we'll, that, hopefully that will help you make a decision. So one thing to, Note is that this is is a discovery meeting. It is not a coaching call. So I try to. I, I couldn't make this in a bolder, but um, just wanted to let you know that that twenty minutes is to help you make that decision. It is not for you to ask me, you know, this strategy versus that. So that's reserved for another another space. Makes sense. All right, guys, this is it. I wish you a great Saturday and we will see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Eddie. All right. Thank, Thank you. Eddie. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Eddie. All right. Have a good weekend.